All right, so we've built this beautiful center spool, but you want to put like 150, 300 million horsepower to this. Uh, this is going to be all about how to make this as strong as it can possibly be. Let's dig into it. All right, let's take all this beautiful stuff off of here. Now, what we're going to be focusing on today is making this. Now you can see that I've countersunk these four weld holes. I've also drilled and tapped right into the hub. These are lined up specifically for that reason and at a certain size. These are 3 8 bolts. So 3 8 bolts, you put them on here. Now I bought 140,000 PSI bolts that are countersunk into here. You can only imagine how much stronger that's going to make this along with welding it on the seam. All right, so I do a lot of work uh, based out of my drill press vise. I love this thing, it changed my life. Um, it makes everything so much easier. So I get a hub, or the hub, I'll stick it in there, tighten it down. Now this thing is automatically level, so it gives us an awesome place to work from. I'll get my hub, slide it in there. Then I'll get the other hub, and I'll pay attention to where these grub screws are. I'll put that on there. Then we can put our end plate in place. And I'm really going to torque this down because I want it solid and I want it right up against that hub. Now, you'll want to make sure that these holes are not lined up with your grub screws like I just did. You want to offset them so when we drill into it, it doesn't drill into those grub screw holes. All right, so that's nice and tight. And then I'm going to get my centering punch, which is 3 8 and put it right in there. And that's perfect center as long as this is straight up and down. Obviously, that's not center. Be very careful when you do this. Uh, there's a little bit of room for error, but not a whole lot. There's not that much room for error. <laughs> so get that on there, tap it. I don't want to spill my coffee, so I'll tap it over there. So now we've got perfectly centered punches, and it's ready for drilling. All right, I'm just going to leave it in here. These holes are going to help keep this uh, bit from, from straying. And I'm going to use my depth meter and drill to about one and a quarter, minus the distance from there. Now, you will have four perfectly aligned drilled holes. Now, I started using this stuff and I love it. I got it to thread, it's tap magic extra cutting fluid. It works amazingly. Uh, everything cuts so much better. If you're not using this stuff, just try out a bottle, see if you like it. So now I'm gonna take off this end plate and I'm going to tap all of these holes. Now I've got my tape marked for the distance of thread I'm using for these bolts. I will not time lapse this. So now I've got my three quarter inch countersink bit, and I'm just gonna countersink all these holes. So now you're just going to assemble it put all the bolts in place make sure they're nice and tight now with all of these bolts being tight we are going to put a weld on here Now once your weld cools, get a flapper disc and just clean it up so it's flush. 
Look at how nicely this came out. Nice and flush. We've got 140 times four. If you're a stickler, it would be two. On a four point, it's gonna at least contact two of these bolts. That's 280,000 PSI, but that's only the rotational strength. Um, with these CV axles um, doing their thing, it tries to wiggle this end plate loose. So welding this center bolt, to the axle locks this all in place. Now, you're still gonna need to pop the axle out and weld here because you're gonna a lot of strength from there. So there's one final thing we could do to make this super crazy strong. Now, the final thing you can do to make this super incredibly strong, and I'm not gonna do it because I'm not ready to finish it yet. There's more I might wanna tinker with, but you can put weld between the splines. You can put welds between the splines here, not on top of them because this sits against that bearing. Put it between the splines and then clean up around there so that still sits flush against that bearing. That's gonna lock this hub to the axle by means other than that bolt. It's gonna make it incredibly strong. Now, this is going to be on your absolute final assembly of this. The reason I did the sprocket side is because the engine is driving the wheels, you're shifting gears, which is a ton of shock on the whole system, and you're using it downshifting to slow down. So the sprocket side gets way more stress than the brake side. The brake side, uh, you should just be able to bolt it on, do your weld bits, and it'll hold just fine. You do have the option of doing the same exact thing uh, other than welding it to the spline. That's the only thing you'll be missing, but it's gonna be crazy strong. There's so much weld, bolt, and adhesion of the plates to the hubs, to the axles, that this is going to be incredibly strong. And I can't wait to show you guys how I'm gonna test it. So that's it. Insanely low cost, easy to build, no lathe, motorcycle spool rear end that is how to make it incredibly strong now you can go out there overpower your yerf dogs build your dream creation that you've been dreaming of your whole life or hopefully use it on a vf1 or vf2 enjoy and if you like this stuff uh please share it there's a lot of us builders out there and we're all looking for neat stuff like this that helps your build get on its way. So anyway, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. You guys are awesome. <laughs> I mean that. I mean that. This has grown into such a huge thing. And I can't thank you guys enough. This is so cool. And you guys are absolutely half of it. I appreciate it. See you guys next time. Now, since you guys stayed till the end, I'll give you a little Easter egg, a little hint as to what's coming. The next one, or part four of this, is obviously going to be stress testing. Now I have a lot of confidence in this. I've been using it and it's it's been amazing. It is all I've hoped for and more. So the hint is the stress test is gonna be on the two-seater. The Easter egg is that it's not gonna be this engine. Um, I've needed something to re-spark <laughs> my interest in the two-seater. Now the two-seater chassis is amazing. Uh, it works so well. The trailing arms are awesome. The seating, the positions, the room for everything is all working out fantastic. There's already people building them and they're loving them too. They say they look awesome in person, but I've been wanting to get a fuel injected engine. These carbs are killing me. Buying a carbureted engine from the late eighties and trying to just revive it and tune the carbs, balance them. It's, not motivating it's just a ton of work and it's hard to do in a buggy so this will be stress tested with just about the most powerful engine you can get. so stay tuned and we are gonna have some fun see ya